Uh, we'll continue with our driver media here at uh, Texas Motor Speedway and our points leader. It's okay. That's I broke it, but I'd like to take it home with me. That's race cool. action. Has Eddie given these as gifts? No. no. Possibly. Is it, did it pop back up there again? Yeah. Okay. Elliot Sadler has joined us. He's our points leader right now in the nationwide NASCAR Nationwide Series mm -hmm. Championship race. And and Elliot, uh, coming here to Texas, you got three races remaining in the in the schedule, and uh, certainly you got to be tasting uh, tasting that championship. Talk about that. Yeah, three races left, and uh, you know it's it's been a great season. It's uh, it's been so much fun to be a part of the championship discussion and and to compete at a high level week in and week out. And we got you know three races left to to close out a you know a, a childhood dream. You know this is what you dream of as kids to be in this this situation. And um, we we've got our best cars we've got in the whole shop lined up for these last three races. And man, we're gonna go after it and see what happens. We'll take questions now for Elliot. If you have one, raise your hand, and we'll uh, get you the uh, wireless microphone. But we should have a couple in here. Questions for Elliot Sadler. Go ahead, David. David, Caravelle and Ask .com. Uh Talked to Luke today. It, you know, he obviously, there's some news about him this week, and he said that that pending move sort of makes him want to win this championship even more. Have you guys talked about sort of what these last kind of weeks together mean and all that stuff? Yeah, because we know this is our last three weeks together at this moment. Um, you know, we're both going on down a different path, and uh, – I am so freaking happy for Luke Lambert. He definitely deserves um, getting that uh, crew chief opportunity on the cup side. He did a great job last year for Jeff, the last few races that he did. And uh, I think he's shown what he's worth. Um, and I've made that comment, you know, a couple times this year throughout, throughout the season that he's probably one of the best kept secrets as far as a crew chief. Very knowledgeable, very uh, even keel guy, you know, very methodical. Uh, really knows what he's doing. So um, i really, uh, really, really happy for him to get this opportunity next year. And I think uh, he's gained a lot of confidence within the RCR organization, being able to do what he's doing this year and, and what he's brought to the table. So, uh, you know, me and him had to sit down a couple weeks ago and like, look, you know, he's never won a championship in the NASCAR level, and I haven't either. So that's, that's, that's all the goal we need, no matter what, what we're doing four weeks from now. You know, the next three weeks, we need to go ahead and try to try to finish this off together. Got a question over here to the right, Bob Pockers. Go ahead, please. Hey, Bob, how's the weather this weekend? <laughs> good. It's supposed to be good. <laughs> All right, good, man. <laughs> Bob Pockers, Sporting News. Um, you, I mean, obviously Luke knows what he's doing next year. Yeah. I'm going to assume you know what you're doing next year. Right. But I don't know if your crew guys really know what they're doing next year. Richard said today he'll still have three nationwide teams. So I'd assume that maybe gives them some comfort. But have you gotten any sense from your crew guys that while they're racing for a championship, they're also kind of unsure what their situation is? I uh, I have had some discussions with my crew guys, and I think uh, with Richard coming out and saying they're going to have three nationwide teams next year, and, I th and they already know that. I think my guys in the shop have already known they're going to have three teams next year. They have stuff in place for that. So my guys feel pretty good about their future. I don't think they know, like, all the – you know, pieces to the puzzle, like who's driving, who's crew chief, and, you know, what position going to be in. But I think as far as jobs and, and still being there in the same situation, I think everybody still feels good about that. And, um, you know, we're all in the same boat. The same question Dave just asked. You know, a lot of those guys have never been in a uh, – won a championship either. So we, we've got a lot of um, wheel on our side on, on, on winning this championship. And, and it's been fun to be a part of them. It's one of the funnest seasons I've ever had in my life as a race car driver. I mean, back to racing at South Boston in the mid-90s where you show up every week and you have a chance to win. Man, that's a lot of doggone fun. So um, I think them guys feel pretty confident that, you know, Richard's going to take care of them um, moving on next year. So as far as from their concern, I, I think they're in pretty good shape. Go right there. Did I answer that how you wanted me to answer it? Okay, good. Yes, sir. That's a good question. Thank you. I appreciate you asking about my guys. We don't we don't get to answer many questions about our guys. Go ahead, Stanley. Yeah, Elliot. Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Yep. You, with three races left and a very tight points race, you seem very relaxed. In this, I, I'm in this having situation. fun, man. I, you know, we answer this. You know, I, I've answered this question a few times. People ask me about pressure and sleeping and all that. This is fun, man. This is cool. I, uh, you know, you dream. You know, as a kid, you ever been in the backyard and you, you know, you want to hit a, a three pointer as the time expires, or you, you throw the ball up in there and you act <laughs> like you're hitting a home run. 
you know, to win the World Series. You know, I grew up racing. You, you want to win races or be in a, a, a position to win a championship. So this is, this is, this is a childhood dream to me. I, I would never imagine two years ago when I came in here to Texas and, you know, I sat on the pole with the 19 car and, and we kind of announced what we were going to do with Harvick. I never knew that day or around that time what, where my life would be at a year later or two years later. Two years later, I'm, I'm battling for a championship in the NASCAR series. How the hell can I be disappointed about that? Man, that's cool. That's fun. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. So I'm living in the moment. I'm not taking anything for granted. I did that earlier in my career when I was younger and didn't know any better. <coughs> I'm cherishing every moment. And this, this is fun, man. Just glad y'all asking me a question and not making me sit up here and just kind of hang out. No. Why? We're going to do the best we can no matter what. You know, if we brought our best car, we feel like we got our best engine, we're going to run our best package, we're going to make our best decisions, I'm going to do my best job as a race car driver, so why, why be stressed? <laughs> right now, it's been my best year. It's been my be I mean, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun when I drove the 38 car back in the day when Todd Parrott was my crew chief, and we made the chase and won races, won a race here. You know, that was fun because you showed up to compete week in and week out. Well, that's what I'm doing this year. We're showing up and competing and leading laps and running up front. That's all I can ask for. All you can ask for as a person is make the most of the opportunity that's given to you. The opportunity was given to me to be a nationwide championship contender and a driver. And I was a contender last year and fell short, which <coughs> was very disappointing. Uh, we've been a contender all year this year, and we want to try to finish the job off. But... Man, that's fun. It would not be fun if we were not running good. That, that's a whole different story. But it's it's fun when you when you can show up and compete. Over to the left here, Jerry. Uh, Jerry Fraley, Dallas Morning News. Elliot, pardon me if I missed something, but are you secure now that you're going to have a gig next year, or are you still yeah. pushing to get something? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this last week off, some, some things really came together for us, and we feel really good about next year. And, uh, I hadn't signed anything yet. It's not all buttoned up, but we feel really good about everything coming together. So I, I had a really good week off. Go to the far right, Woody, and then back to Bob. Raise your hand there. Right there, Rodney. Rodney. Woody came with MRN. Elliot, just wanted to jump ahead a little bit and talk about Phoenix coming up next week. You won there earlier. I imagine you got a ton of confidence going back in there with that being one of the three you've got left, right? Yeah, um, <clears throat> we uh, that car that we won with at Phoenix at the beginning of the year, you know, it's the first win I've had in Nationwide Series in a long time. Uh, was the same car I won with at Iowa, and it's the same car I won with at Bristol. It was one of my best cars, um, and I wrecked it at Richmond and totaled it. So we felt, oh boy, what are we going to do now? And actually, Ernie Cope has stepped forward and let us have <coughs> one of his good cars that Kevin Harvick won with at Richmond. So that's that's what teamwork's all about. So we feel very confident, very good about going to Phoenix next week being we did win there in the spring which always feels good so um, you know that's going to be a track position you know with the new pavement a track position pitch strategy style of race uh, so we're going to try to play it to the best of our ability and and see what happens Bob uh, Bob Hawker Sporting News did your hometown or anything get any damage from from Sandy that's a that's a good question Bob we um we got a you know Power was out a little bit and a few trees blown over roads, but nothing like what we've seen in the Northeast, man. I, man, my heart goes out to uh, everybody up there. It's just not a place you really think of getting hit by, by a hurricane, you know, up that far in the Northeast. And the pictures are just devastating. So it's, um, I was very proud of, you know, Governor Christie and some of those guys that have really been very um, uh, open minded and working hard and trying to get everything going right in their home state and seems to be everybody pitching in pretty well up there so <coughs> we were very fortunate in Virginia compared to what they're going going through in the Northeast you know we have a lot of race fans up there so hopefully everybody's doing okay other questions for Elliot yes ma'am right here get her get that young lady the mic please thank you hi Janine Cloud with Skirts and Scuffs um, not too long ago I had occasion to visit your your sponsor and uh -huh. um, one of their locations, and uh, during that conversation, I mentioned your name, and the guy just lit up. Yeah, he was like, "Yeah, that's our driver." How does that make you feel as a driver? That even the folks in the little office back in Houston think of you that's as good. their driver. 
<laughs> we, we want people in the branches to, to wrap their arms and their hands around, you know, our, the racing <coughs> program that One Main Financial has. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this. Uh, One Main Financial is, is one of the longest-running sponsors in the Nationwide Series. You know, they've supported racing here for a long time. Started back with Robert Yates Racing, I think, in 2004, 2005. So they've been a part of the sport a long time. And uh, it's all about getting the branches involved. Uh, team morale, really believe in the program. It's all about reaching new customers and consumers. But we, man, that's great. You know, I visited a branch this morning, uh, about 30 minutes from here, and man, race fans were excited, and the people in the branch were excited. We went and gave them tickets. Man, they were blown away. Come, come to their first race at Texas Motor Speedway this weekend. So that's that's what the racing program's all about. That's what racing's all about: reaching different people from different backgrounds and different demographics. And uh, we we want people to believe in our racing program. It's awesome. Stan? I got one more for you, Elliot. Okay, yeah. So come Homestead, if, if you achieve the goal that you're out for, what's it going to be like for the rest of the Saddlers that are going to be standing there supporting you the whole way? Well, I think it's going to be, I mean, if that day comes and if it happens, it's going to be great for all of us because my family has stood by me through the good times in racing that I've had and through the bad times in racing that I've had. My mom and dad have been very instrumental in who I am as a person first and and then what I am as a race car driver they supported me they made a ton of sacrifices when I was a kid to make sure Hermie and I could go racing every weekend and I didn't understand it that time as the kid but now I understand it more as a as an adult uh, it's gonna be a great day if that happens you know my family's all coming anyway they always come to the last race of the season you know my son and my daughter are coming so if you know if that happens we'll it should be a good day but we still got a lot of racing left a lot of racing left to do, but I'll be honest with you, the, the day my life changed was uh, uh, when my son was born and, and had surgery. You know, we, we didn't know if he was going to make it, and he had surgery the day after he was born, and, and uh, <clears throat> I was laying out looking at him going, if he can go through this, you know, we stayed in the NICU nine weeks. If he could go through this, having surgery at one day old, then have surgery again, you know, three weeks later and survive, I know damn well I can become a good race car driver and do what I want to do in life. And if he can fight for his life and do stuff like that, um, I know I can do what I need to do on a racetrack. But that's when my life and my outlook and my mental approach and everything, I mean, changed like a switch as far as being a race car driver. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Far left over here. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, Drew Davidson with the Fourth Star Telegram. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, j just to clarify, for next year, uh -huh. is it a nationwide ride or – is that that's a good question you don't know yet <laughs> might be a little bit of everything you never know yeah but I, I guess i mean do you have hopes of getting back to cup racing are you pretty yes happy i right do now? have hopes of getting back to cup and uh trying to put myself in a position where <laughs> i will achieve that opportunity and feel like the the road that i'm going down will give me the best opportunity to be a part of the chase I can be able to come in here and talk to you guys at Texas here in a couple years talking about being a part of the chase. 